Got a solid four hours of sleep, solid as the ground felt through the blankets. Place stunk less than last night, despite the added corpses downstairs. Candles were still burning at the flesh altar. Hardly looked like they'd gone down, actually. Had they gone up? I couldn't even tell, and didn't want to ponder those implications. I was out bright and early, missing my boarded-up motel room. Still, I had something to do before I went home. That gun store I mentioned. Decided to pop in to see if my journey couldn't yield a lovable souvenir. I knew it was going to be messy. Who wouldn't have looted the place already? Main shop floor was just empty shelves and debris. A few old customers who had to be put down, too. They had a few gun-related dregs, like springs, sliders, and scopes missing the lenses. There were cartridges for the musket, as with just about every cranny of the town. Scrounged some real bullets, tauntingly useless to me. There was a shooting gallery in the basement that stank of fun. Someone had been throwing the zombies into the concrete range tunnels and blasting them. Place was littered with bodies. Shooting could have been done better, clearly, as about half of them were trying to get up to meet me. I finished them off, admittedly from a closer than sporting distance. I even found a stash hidden under some roof tiles at one point. There was a lockbox I couldn't pry open, so I took the stone hammer from my belt and just slammed the thing for a good 20 minutes, desperate for what I imagined was life-saving gear inside. Got me a bunch of cartridges, more muskets, and a hell of an aching arm. The stash had a load of canned food, so that's life-saving gear of a sort. Enjoyed a lunch crammed into the silent crawl space. Around 1pm I headed out with a bag full of beef and bullets, a real old-fashioned American shopping trip. Saw something pretty special as I went, a sign. Yeah, I should have mentioned this, but all the little roads and empty towns had practically no signage left, just empty posts. Didn't want the zombies knowing where they were going, was that it? Or maybe it just made for a good bit of armour. Sign I saw was pointing north and south, naming Arrowhead and Apache. Just going down the dictionary to name places? Neither had distances. Cool. Useless. No sign for Friends of Promise, but I had better bearings by then. Following said hunch, I went out of town to the southwest. I saw the orange plume of the day's drop by a house on the very edge of town nearby and checked it. Good thing I did, as I recognised the place as one of the first houses I'd seen when I first got into town. Didn't have a name for this town. Shrine Town, right? Box had food and plastic tubes filled with loose ball bearings. Like I was running out of those things. Powers that be liked the musket angle. Feeling the cynicism set in for good, I took those weirdos food and hiked home. Motel was quiet, good time to clean up and nod off. Woke up to my watch alarm about 9.30 p.m. Quick look outside confirmed it, another red sky. Every two days, that seemed to be the rule. Was starting to think it wasn't just something that was happening, rather something someone was doing. Flushes the zombies out, I guess, if the government wanted to come down and shoot them. As things were, seemed they just wanted to see me shooting them. Did they still have satellites looking down on all this? Still wasn't sure if civilization existed beyond a crazy guy throwing leftovers from the discount food store out of some hot-wired 1940s plane. It had at least one other effect. The bodies of those I'd killed before and neatly stacked up at the end of the parking lot were gone, save one or two. Always wondered if I really was killing them and had noticed bodies disappearing from day to day. Thought it could have been animals, but this pile was too much and it was all there just a few hours back. Mist must remind them that they're not quite as dead as once thought, unless I really ripped them apart. Even then, maybe the infection was still raring to go inside the broken down corpse like a racer in a pit stop. Made sense, thinking about it. Average corpse didn't last a year, yet here they all were. The infection mimics life a little more than just pulling nerve strings. So, what was I? Yeah, I kept thinking about that, on and off. Good way to avoid it was just to cut those puppet strings whenever they dangled close by. I'd already had a decent think about what I'd do if the mist came that night, so I just started the plan. 
Operation Cower on the Roof. Easy enough for an amateur, effective enough to humble the pros. Second floor walkway had a part on the end where you could get onto the roof of the main office, then climb the white plastic sign to get onto the red tiled main roof. I actually hung out mainly on the office roof, since I felt like I could jump off it if I needed to. Zombies came later than usual, but like a gang of party-hard students, they wandered up the road and into the parking lot. I was peering down at them, trying to see if any of them were the same ones I killed before. I think not. Where'd the wounded ones head off to then? And where'd this new slew of guests come from? The new bunch saw me up there and took the stairs to the upper walkway, following my route to the roof. Pretty much just sat there firing the musket for a few hours, had hundreds of cartridges neatly lined up ready to go. Nothing else to do in the downtime. By about two in the morning they stopped trying to get to me. Must have shot about twenty with not a scratch on me. Went down and beat the stragglers back to death with a length of wood, which was far more tiring than the hours of musketry. And that was that, clean and efficient slaying that seemed to exhaust the supply of rowdy locals. The whole time I was hoping that someone was watching me, and feeling pissed that I was ruining their little plan to conquer the world with a red mist. Yeah, I was going down the mad scientist kind of route with my theories. Didn't have much to go on, did I? Might as well have just blamed the fairies, like my parents. Shouldn't throw shade on them though, should I? At least they listened to the fairies and skipped town before Z-Day, right? No point pretending I knew a single thing about it. Left the corpses where they were this time. They could show themselves out when they were ready, and indeed they did. When I went out to piss a few hours later, they'd already cleared off. Trails of dripping fluids went in all directions, no pattern. Cool. By then, I'll kill you better next time. With the satisfied customers checked out, I spent the morning relaxing in bed, or spacing out at least. Then I took myself up to the roof again, with a folding chair and a bag full of sticks. New plan. I set up for a leisurely sit beside a little fire, keeping an eye on my watch. Just before 12 I dripped some gasoline on the pile and lit it up. Didn't make as much smoke as I wanted. You get what I was going for though. Clock hit 12. Sure enough, I heard that plane buzzing up from the south. It was real close. Close enough they definitely saw my smoke signal, I thought. Not that something being on fire was such a shock. But I was clearly there, waving on the roof beside it, and that warm red motel roof was eye-catching enough on its own. I didn't really need to be so desperate for attention. They knew I was there already, and at last I got my confirmation when I went to get the box they dropped today. It was in the woods the motel overlooked, less than five minutes from my perch. Got there and found a decent stack of food cans, fresh water, and some jars of preserves. Main thing though, was a sheet of paper. It read, If you get attacked, eat a whole jar of honey. Don't throw up. Stops the infection. Still working on something better. No way out yet, keep waiting. Don't follow the signs. Don't listen to Crazy Jake. If that makes no sense, good. It was signed BB Hassan. Was I supposed to know who that was? No logos or anything, and it was handwritten. Probably not the government after all. So there we have it. The answers I'd been waiting for had arrived. I was having fun with the mad scientist theory. Now I didn't even know where to start. No way out yet. Helicopter? Tank? What was the problem there? Ended up saying some of these questions aloud to the sky. Was less sure anyone was actually watching though. I thought about a lot of possibilities, probably wrong every time. Went back to the motel and just potted about cleaning up my room and carrying out home improvements. Made a decent fire in the bathroom and cooked some of my new canned meals. Pretty good. No way out yet. You've got a plane, assholes. Kept an ear open in case Crazy Jake came knocking. All was quiet, and I actually started feeling pretty okay health-wise. The fatigue of being dead was fading. Had lots to eat, a bed, time to wash everything, and not a single zombie came anywhere near the motel, far as I could tell. I was living the life. Got myself up on the roof for the next midday flyover. Was staring out south, 
then got surprised from behind, just barely caught sight of the plane crossing the horizon somewhere far to the northwest, was still flying low enough to be audible, only a distant buzz though. About half an hour passed before I saw a thread of the orange flare smoke way out west. Thought it might have been back in that funeral spot in the woods. Nope, further out than that, which I learned the hard way. Yeah, I was hiking again, and it didn't go too well. First things first, when I got close enough to the box to see it, I got blindsided by a wild boar. Yep, a genuine non-zombie problem all of a sudden. It wasn't that big at least. Its tusks cut my arm and had me bleeding pretty badly. I think I knocked it out when I whacked it over the head with a piece of knotted wood I had jammed in my belt. Then I kept my distance and shot an arrow into it with the bow across my chest. Ancient stuff. I had bandages, so I cleaned myself up. Staring at the boar, I realized I'd just scored myself some serious dinner if I had the balls to do the dirty work with it. Forget all that. The bigger picture right then was more serious. For starters, there was a bloody human torso crawling towards me, its exposed spine weathered against the soil it ploughed through. Shot it. Where did it come from? The hellscape that was smack dab in front of me. Forest fire looked like. The woods were black and ashen, reduced to charred trunks. The ground was really dusty, spewing up clouds with each step I took. It was an unappealing sight although at the time I was just trudging hazily forwards, clutching my arm. Really hurt. Had to go a few hundred meters more to get to the box, and I saw some more of those half-zombies fumbling in the ash. Their flesh was warped and lumpy, and those exposed spines had a story to tell. These guys weren't chopped in half, their lower halves had slipped off, melted off. Looks like the fire didn't kill them, but damn if that wasn't worth a try. BB Hassan's doing? Killed a few that were writhing about too close for comfort, and got to the box in one piece. Shotgun shells and iron gauntlets. Do these guys even know you can't just throw bullets to make them work? It was pretty much a waste, and getting a serious gash in my arm was a steep price. I went straight back, taking the only thing of any use to me in that ashen wood, the dead boar. Heavy to drag. Made me hungry did the stripping of meaty bits a ways off from the motel, and got messier than expected. Didn't really like it, but eating the roasted pieces in bed a few hours later made me look back on the whole thing in a different way. Arm was still throbbing with pain, although the bleeding had calmed down. Messed the bed up a decent amount. The whole calm vacation atmosphere of the previous day was fading fast, and of course it was the seventh night. First, third, fifth, seventh. Odd numbered nights, zombie delights. My arm hurt too much to have any fun. Luckily it was my left arm, so I could still shoot roughly straight if I winced through the recoil. Nowhere near as good as I'd been doing two days back though, because of a wild boar of all things. That night went a little differently to the usual fare, aside from just my subpar shooting. First clue was that the zombies were louder than before. Not their grunts and such, but they're smashing and crashing downstairs. They were going to town on the whole motel, enough so that I came down from the roof to see just what was happening. A large number of them seemed to have given up on climbing up to the roof to find me, hence drying up my supply of easy targets to blast. Instead, they'd started ripping apart the cheap plaster lining the walls, and then levering their own limbs through gaps to gradually tear apart the wooden struts holding the rooms together. It wasn't doing their bodily integrity any favours. The room at the base of the stairs was getting turned into an open plain space right before my eyes. It was something new for sure. It was scary. Yeah, lots of things were, but this was a clear demonstration of what these creatures could do to my room if they wanted. I'd felt safe behind my wooden door. Now I wondered if the second floor was going to collapse with all the walls below being blown out made the pain subside thinking like that, made me start looking out into the bloody darkness of the woods. Well, I stayed there for the time being, and shot the zombies around the base of the stairs. This was actually safe in a way, as their frantic attacks had ripped off the lower steps, they were just wooden planks. 
They didn't all share the climbing acumen of the big lady back in the shrine house, so those that were going for me just floundered down there and contributed to the bashing of nearby walls. Got startled a few times when zombies appeared up on the landing with me. Must have been climbing up windows around the back of the buildings and slipping into the second floor rooms. My room was boarded up pretty well, but I hadn't had the gumption to fortify the rest. I was split between going back to my cowering spot up top and wanting to do as much damage to the zombies on the ground as possible, trying to scare them off or something. Just kept shooting. At about three I'd polished off the lot of them. My arm hurt more than before now. Went down with that makeshift spear to poke the corpses and persuade a few to stay still. Main office had been messed up badly, but the walls were concrete, so nothing serious. Rest of the rooms were somewhere between disturbed and, what, there used to be a room here? The rooms below mine had it worst. Yeah, I took the hint. Realized I had a lot of work to do if I even wanted to repair the stairs and have a way up to my room in the first place now. I bought out the vending machine with the evening's take to get some old soup, still hadn't broken into the thing, because I'm the hero here, right? Then I used some debris to get back up in the meantime and have some much needed breakfast. Tired enough to sleep, worried enough to just focus on what I had to do, pack. I took a load of food, a load of bullets and most of the first aid stuff and stuffed it all into the biggest backpack I'd collected. Hammer and club in the belt, bow around the torso, cartridges in the pockets of my leather coat and musket gripped in both hands. Face the morning bright and early, looking like a travelling salesman. Truth was, I was a runaway. I wanted more than wood between me and the mist, and I wasn't going to sleep until I had it. And more than anything, I wanted a machine gun. Hey, a kid can dream. Could have fought it up somewhere better there in Friends of Promise, but I was thinking more about Shrine Town now, with its shopping streets, radio tower, big churches. Seemed like a better haunt, even if it was more haunted. Chance of getting discovered, getting a message, in or out, just had to be better there. Was I right to think that? Dunno. I'd been up all night bleeding and panicking, so the real logic behind it probably isn't going to hold water. Point is, I started walking out into the desert, hoping to cross bright and early to miss the heat. Goodbye motel, all of a sudden. Didn't know it then, but it was going to be a long while before I slept in a bed again. <laughs>